Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Cindy Lumpkin, the LD educator. And as you know, I am a special education teacher. Today, I am gonna be kind of sharing my opinion around this whole school shooting and my thoughts on why I feel like the Missouri prosecutor, Karen McDonald, is really a hero, not only to teachers, but um, students and administrators as well. So this might be a little bit controversy. I don't necessarily mean it to be. For me, I really think this is a turning point in which needs to happen in order to uh, better hold parents accountable um, for their children in some instances. Okay, so by now you all know that the prosecutor in this school shooting, Karen McDonald, um, has decided to prosecute the parents for their role in not preventing their son from going on a shooting spree and killing his fellow classmates. When I heard this news, I instantly got excited. And the reason why I got excited was because after I heard her mention the facts that they have let out so far about how the parents were contacted, how it wasn't the child's first time doing something that a teacher had to, um, I guess, refer somewhere else and that, that they were at the school the day that this all happened. <sighs> In addition to the fact that they actually purchased a gun for the student. And I definitely feel like it's negligence on the behalf of the parents, but I think teachers should be like just thanking this woman. And the reason why I say that is because, uh, you know, you have <laughs> three types of parents, right? You have parents who are not at all engaged in their child's um, education. Then you have parents who are overly engaged or who tries to circumvent the system and basically um, with threats of different kinds of things, basically um, try to run the school, right? Try to run the school, try to run administration, try to run um, students, I mean teachers. Um, in, in addition, then you have those parents in the middle who if there's a healthy dose of holding the school responsible, um, a healthy dose of them doing their part and a healthy dose of um, allowing their children to take responsibility. And I believe for far too long, particularly in particular communities, um, parents have run the school and it's not always for the better. You know, where I'm from, I know that there was a group of parents who got together and did what they had to do to ensure that the teachers in this particular school was Orton Gillingham trained. That type of stuff is awesome. When you mobilize and you get together to cause the much needed change to take place in a particular school, it is awesome. But when you as a parent are telling administrators what will happen and what and what will happen and what will not happen or when students are um, misbehaving and then all of a sudden parents are coming up and saying no my child won't this won't happen to my child or that won't happen to my child that is the problem and I, I think we can't continue as a society to ask teachers to do their part and so in this particular case the child uh, was referred to the office when he was found researching ammunition, right? Um, I don't know if it was the same teacher or a different teacher, but once that drawing was found, the child was sent to the office again. So we here's a situation where every time the teacher is doing what he or she's supposed to do, but at some point it's getting stopped. The line of communication is being broken. And I think it's unfair to require teachers to be these um, reporters of these incidents, or I don't want to say unfair, but it is the expectation that they're supposed to report these things, but yet no one does anything is particularly unfair, particularly when you're talking about kids who have the capacity to do things like this. Because to me, in this situation, I would have been thinking, God, if I was those teachers, because what if I or the child who or the person that did this, what if he was offended by those teachers referring him to the office? What if he started to feel like he was being picked on because every time a teacher saw 
something or whatever they were referring to, to him to the office, but yet there was no consequence. So I really feel like in this situation, um, those teachers in general were put into bad situations. So I, I do believe that the boldness and the courage of this prosecutor to really bring, bring charges against this parent um, or these parents will change the face of what parents are allowed to say what takes place with their child. Because I think in hindsight, looking back now, we all can say that he probably should have not been allowed to stay at school. But as a former administration in public schools, I can almost see what happened in my brain. These parents were called up. They probably made light of the fact that their son um, was researching ammunition, that their son uh, was doing these drawings. And I, I do believe he had an excuse or whatever. So for them, they, they couldn't see their little Johnny. I know that's not his name, but that's even in the field of special education, sometimes parents are not able to see what others are able to see in their child. It is because of our love for our children, right? When I see my child, you know, it is almost this little perfect blah, 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 blah. But um, I can't be so blind, especially in a situation like this, that I refuse to stay blind with what my child is dealing with because it is neglect. There were probably way more indications that this child needed help. And I think at every turn, the parents closed a blind eye, even on the day of, instead of allowing that child to be taken home or to do whatever it is that they were supposed to be doing, I can almost tell you they put up a sting. They was like, no, he's not staying here. Why? Because he did X, Y, Z. He just told you that it didn't mean anything and all of this stuff. And the principal bowed to the parent. Now, when we start looking at whether or not somebody at the school should be prosecuted, you know, it's hard. I think I would probably go out on a limb and say, no, I feel like we're walking uncharted territory, right? I don't think most schools really have definitive rules, policies set into place. And if we go ahead on and put certain rules, laws into place just for the good of everybody else, then I think it will allow uh, administrators to be able to make better judgment decisions. You know, um, I feel like, you know, with where we are in this day and age, if you see a child who are remotely doing anything at school uh, with that uh, is connected with guns and ammunition or drawing saying that they hate people, they want to kill people, shooting somebody, all of that should send alarm bells. And we should have laws and policies in place that immediately the child, something is done and uh, investigation is done deeper and that that child is removed from the setting until someone can reasonably say, hey, you know, this is just, you know, a child doing X, Y, Z, or this is a child that really needs some help. Um, you know, as parents, sometimes we are not always really able to kind of just see these things in our children, particularly when Obviously, it looks like the fact that they were um, these gun enthusiasts, as I would say, they probably reared him in that type of environment and they probably used all types of language associated with it where to them, that type of language with that particular child may not seem to, you know, ring so many alarm bells because it's like, oh yeah, he didn't mean it. You know, I, I hate to kind of make this um, connection, but it's almost like someone who used the N word, right? Well, yeah, but I didn't mean it, right? You said it. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So in likewise, if he's saying these things, no matter what you think, no matter whether or not you don't think he mean it, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I, for one, am thanking Karen McDonough. Thank you for being brave. Like she, I'm positive, she's going to get some pushback. I'm sure that people are going to drag her name. And, you know, some people are saying that the, the case or the charges will not stick. I don't know, but I am thanking her on behalf of teachers, students, 
and administrators for having the courage to take this on, for having the courage to say, this is not right. I don't care what other precedents have been made. It is time for parents to take some sort of responsibility. Now, she has already stated, this is not about parents being um, held responsible responsible for uh, their child being bad actors. You know, we, those of us who are parents and have children, you know that we can preach till we're blue in the face what's right, what's, uh, what's expected, and they don't always do it, right? And they still go their own way. We're, she's not talking about that. She's talking about cases where just parents are being negligent. Here is two parents who fed into a child who obviously was having some emotional issues and they failed that child. They failed that child. They even failed to, to parent. Like, you know, for them to say, or for the mother to say, hey, I'm not mad at you. Just don't get caught next time. Even if she didn't feel as if anything should have happened to her son because he was caught searching ammunition, she should have at least said, you know what? That is inappropriate. That is not the appropriate place to be looking um, up ammunition. When you're at school, it's about school. And then here's the rules at school and here, you know, so having that child to see a clear boundaries. And so what she said, you basically do whatever you want, but just don't get caught. That's not great parenting. And as you can see, look where it got us, where there are four parents who are now burying their children. There are seven other parents who are praying to make sure their children have a full recovery. And then there's hundreds of children who have been traumatized by the senseless act of one child who needed help and who didn't get it. And the biggest of the people who failed him was the people who raised him, who lived with him. And that's sad. We have to hold parents responsible and they cannot rule what goes on in the school system. I wish that principal would have had the courage to tell that parent, no, you listen your child needs to go home and you have, and that child can't return until he has some type of mental evaluation. But instead, he was allowed to go back to the room and given two days to have that evaluation or that counseling session. That right there was the tragedy. And whether or not anybody else from the school system is prosecuted, they are going to have to live with that because they could have stopped it as well if they would have had the courage not to allow parents to force their hand. But once again, in all of this, kudos to those teachers. Thank you for being vigilant. Thank you so much for referring um, that child when you saw that. Thank you for not turning a blind eye. And thank you, Karen McDonald, for showing people, showing parents that we have a responsibility to parent. We have a responsibility to work with the school when they see a, a concern and we can't force what we want on them. Okay, so that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think. Where do you fall? Do you think the parents should be held responsible? Do you think someone at the school should be charged? How do you feel about what I've said? Um, at the end of the day, though, I know, and I am so thankful for Karen McDonald. I am praying for you, girl. And I pray that everything with this court case goes smoothly and that you are able to prosecute it and that they are held accountable.